Only 300 miles from Los Angeles, Mammoth delivers an impressive alpine environment for a mountain within such a short driving distance of one of the U.S.'s warmest cities. This California mountain reaches the highest elevation of any West Coast resort, and sees slightly colder temperatures than Tahoe Mountains a few hours north. The resort can offer an awesome experience on the right day thanks to its massive footprint and monster powder, but those considering a trip here should heed a few shortcomings before committing. Mammoth's footprint might look a bit shorter than you may expect, but once you get on the slopes, you'll find quite stunning terrain. The resort's tremendously wide footprint provides for several distinct mountain areas, allowing visitors to spread out and feel isolated. Rock formations make for striking landscapes across the footprint. Mammoth Summit offers some of the most beautiful views at the resort, but it's very touristy and attracts a lot of foot traffic. If you can think of a type of terrain, chances are Mammoth has some flavor of it. In addition to typical below treeline slopes, lower mountain areas contain a variety of glade terrain and some cool natural half pipes. The upper mountain hosts a series of high alpine bowls. Terrain faces an array of different angles, so unique conditions can persist across various resort areas. And it's a good thing that these different terrain angles exist, as Mammoth's weather patterns make for somewhat variable snow conditions. On the plus side, accumulation, while wet and heavy by overall standards, tends to be more consistent than other west coast resorts thanks to the higher elevation. Mammoth sees its fair share of powder days each season, thanks to massive snow totals over short periods of time. But conversely, fickle storm cycles mean the resort may go days without snow, before receiving several feet in that next storm. Making matters even more complicated, varying winter temperatures mean the resort can get warm and then freeze over, making that next snowstorm all the more necessary. Dang. The resort's heavily exposed upper mountain sees serious wind, and some sections are especially susceptible to icy, windswept conditions. The resort has had to get creative to ensure it can actually operate its most exposed areas on a regular basis, with innovations such as this wind house at the top of chair 23. Luckily, when it gets warm enough, the snow softens up and can be good for days, even without a new storm. This means that while they seldom offer the best quality powder, Mammoth's early spring months often provide the resort's most consistent experience. Speaking of spring, Mammoth boasts one of the best late season experiences in all of North America. The resort's generous accumulation and high elevation make for exceptional snow preservation. Seasons regularly last until Memorial Day, and in the best years, they can go as late as early August. Terrain surrounding the main lodge typically stays open the longest, with options for all ability levels generally remaining until the very end. Beginner options at Mammoth are somewhat limited. The true green classification is essentially reserved for Bunny Hill areas. A handful of runs designated as green black trails and designed for low intermediates exist across the resort, but they're mainly limited to lower mountain slopes. Luckily, Novices who do choose to visit Mammoth can skip the full price ticket and just buy a pass valid only on the beginner chairs. Visitors will need to reach intermediate proficiency to really appreciate the mountain. Mammoth offers plenty of distinctive groomed cruisers, several of which offer striking views of their surrounding footprint. Blue-black trails designated for advanced intermediate visitors are a bit steeper than typical blues, but they offer the best panoramic cruiser views at the resort. A few blue and blue-black trails remain ungroomed for large portions of the season and develop moguls. To really get the most out of your mammoth experience, you'll want to be an advanced or expert visitor. In addition to a range of steep technical mogul runs, this resort boasts some of the most aggressive terrain in the region. Much of the credit can be attributed to the resort's rock-riddled footprint Rocks line the tops of chutes, resulting in exceptionally sketchy entries and making for distinctive colors. While they require considerable snowfall to fill in, certain places boast truly extreme lines that require mandatory air or freefalls. One drawback, none of Mammoth's advanced or expert lines are really that long, 
so the mountain isn't really a place to take serious endurance laps. One of the best parts about Mammoth is its absolutely phenomenal terrain park experience. No matter where you go on the mountain, there always seems to be a freestyle setup. Mammoth's nine terrain parks include boxes, rails, jumps, and a number of unique specialty features. Even as some competitors have toned down their terrain parks, Mammoth still boasts some of the largest freestyle features in the country, which has driven pro athletes to set up shop here for years. Mammoth is a large, wide mountain, and getting around the resort isn't exactly easy. On the plus side, the resort doesn't have many truly flat areas, so it doesn't take much traversing or catwalking to get around. Several, but not all chairlifts, feature handy, safety bar mounted trail maps. Additionally, it's possible to get between mountain areas fairly quickly from the top of the resort. Lifts such as Cloud 9 and the Panorama Gondola provide access to trails that directly lead to faraway mountain areas. However, these trail routes are only suitable for those who've reached advanced intermediate or better proficiency. Beginners and intermediates will need to stick to lower mountain chairs to get between resort areas, and depending on the on-mountain destination, this can involve multiple lifts. Long lines also tend to build up just about everywhere during the busiest holiday periods, although the presence of multiple lift options at key base areas does help. Getting around Mammoth can also be difficult under low visibility conditions. The resort can get quite foggy during storm cycles, and some high alpine areas aren't sufficiently marked to clearly designate trail boundaries during these times. But perhaps the worst part about getting around Mammoth is its signage. It's a complete mess. On-mountain signs are busy, and it can take a few seconds to decode them. Each trail sign carries a green, blue, or black color that generally corresponds to ability level, but this is separate from the actual trail rating, and the logic isn't intuitive enough to click as fast as it should. Pink signs, which correspond to facility and lift directions, actually compound the issue. Difficulty markings on the right-hand side make these placards look like actual trail markers. The green-black and blue-black trail icons are hard to contrast from the regular green circle and black diamond designations, and without a close look, it's easy to miss that these designations even exist. Adding to the confusion, some trail ratings on signs don't correspond to the ratings on trail maps. This holiday trail is green on this sign, but on the trail map, it's green-black. But even if you're completely lost, it doesn't take much work to stop in for a break at Mammoth. Major junctions and base areas offer plenty of food and indoor and outdoor lodge options, and most of these offer decent capacity. However, during peak times, it can be difficult to find seating everywhere, except perhaps the backside. Mammoth maintains an impressive, complex lift network in order to service its massive footprint. Most major resort areas enjoy high-speed lift service, and the top-to-bottom panorama gondola provides quick access across much of the resort's vertical drop. The gondola also offers a mid-station for loading in the event you don't want to do an entire top-to-bottom run to lap the terrain off the summit. But Mammoth's modern lift infrastructure doesn't reach every corner of the resort, and some places, such as the backside and many expert-focused areas, maintain slow, fixed-grip lift service. One notable positive about Mammoth, very little of its terrain requires hiking to get to. Only the expert hemlocks and a few flats off the summit ridge require a hike to reach, but these paths are short and groomed. So Mammoth does have a few issues, but it's about as well-rounded as a resort on the U.S. West Coast can get. Variable weather patterns won't make Mammoth the best place to book a months in advance ski vacation to, and the wide footprint can definitely be a pain to get around. But few other areas in North America can match the resort's expansive terrain, top-tier freestyle setup, and spring experience. Lift ticket prices can be steep, with one-day adult rates as high as $170 during peak days in February and March. But those driving from Southern California will have a tough time finding anything else even remotely comparable. Thank you.